George Shatner said, "Translation exists because men speak different languages." This truism is, in fact, founded on a situation which can be regarded as enigmatic and as posing problems of extreme psychological and social historical difficulty. This multifaceted nature of language and communication is profoundly explored in the works of Irish dramatist Brian Friel. That work is called Translations. Brian Friel's work can be described in three periods: works published between 1952 to 1964, those between 1964 to 1988, and those from 1988 to 2015. The works published from 1964 to 1988 hold significant literary value as they shift focus from themes of individual found in the preceding and Following periods to the themes of nation, notably translations released in 1980 explores potent themes of language, identity, and cultural conflict, reflecting the complex historical relationship between Ireland and Britain. This work, through its title "Translations," reflects various meanings and themes. In this play, translation is not only about translating Irish place names into English, but also represents the process of change and understanding between two cultures, the identity of each character, and the translation of past and present. In this sense, translations can be summarized in a word as being about invisibility. It involves revolves around the invisibility of translator Owen, the individual invisible power dynamics of the British Army, and the invisible conflicts of the Irish. To show this invisibility. This Irish play, being a form of literature primarily aimed at audiences, possesses a dialogic nature. It is created with stage performance in mind, where the story unfolds through interactions and dialogues between characters. Consequently, the themes in the work are expressed in various forms through the discourse of the play, necessitating a rhetorical analysis. First, ethos involves establishing the authority of the speaker. To establish ethos, a speaker must adapt their arguments and language to align with the audience's values, beliefs, and expectations. In translations, the credible, credibility and morality of each character are expressed through their use of language and attitudes. For instance, each character's perspective on language and culture is tied to their moral credibility, playing a vital role in understanding the conflict between Ireland and Britain. So, understanding each characters of this play is very important to understand、uh, the ethos. And this is the list of the characters of this play. It is based on August 1833,、uh, Belly Bag. Owen is the main character of this play, who serves as a translator from Irish to English, symbolizing change and adaptation. Owen describes his profession as, "My job is to translate the quaint, archaic tongue you people persist in speaking into the king's good English." He is torn between tradition and modernity, representing various responses to the changes in language and culture. Owen's character reveals complex attitudes towards colonialism and its impact on individuals and communities. Owen, who was called Roland by the British soldiers, reveals his real name in the second act, which holds a very symbolic meaning. The scene where Owen's name is misunderstood as Roland represents the misunderstandings and gaps between languages and cultures. It symbolically shows the cultural conflicts and misunderstandings between Ireland and England. Additionally, the 
Anglicization of Owen's name symbolizes the transformation of both his personal identity and Irish identity. Owen, mediating between Irish and English cultures, experiences tension regarding his roots and identity. Working as a translator, he intentionally provides inaccurate translations to conceal the British military's objectives, demonstrating the actual power of language and its subjectivity. In response to Manus pointing out Owen's translation and the fact that Owen is being called Roland, Owen asserts his perspective by saying, uncertainty in meaning is inspired poetry, who said that, this line can be interpreted in light of the translator's invisibility, suggesting that the act of translation inherently involves interpretation and subjectivity, which can obscure the original text intent and cultural context. And in Act 2, Scene 1, when Owen reasserts that his name is not Roland, but Owen, it signifies his personal transformation and growth, showing a deep understanding of his roots and values. Correcting his name can also be interpreted as an act of resistance against colonial pressure and uh, cultural dominance. Ultimately, Owen accepts his roots and cultural identity clearly, uh, expressing this to the British soldiers, thus representing his awareness of personal and cultural identity. Manus is a character who embodies the spirit of tradition and resistance. He shows a refusal to accept the influence of English and strives to pers uh, preserve Irish traditions. This attitude symbolizes resistance to colonial invasion. Hugh, as a teacher at the school, emphasizes the importance of education and knowledge. He symbolizes the link between classical knowledge and modern society, representing a deep understanding and contemplation of the changing times. His role as an educator is also crucial, especially in his efforts to teach Sarah, who is mute, to speak her name. This act symbolizes the power of language to give voice to the voiceless, and the role of education is in empowering individuals. Hugh's teachings, which encompass both the classical languages and the contemporary situation, highlight the importance of the knowledge as a tool for both preserving the past and understanding the present. In this play, the character of Mayor serves as a symbol of the tension between traditional island and the encroaching forces of modernity. Beyond her romantic relationship with Lieutenant Yoland, Mayer plays a pivotal role in the narrative. Her struggle represents the broader cultural conflicts faced by Ireland during this period. Despite the language barrier and their desperate backgrounds, Mayer and Yoland's deep emotional connection exemplifies the potential for human relationship to transcend linguistic boundaries. In this sense, these characters are key elements informing the ethos of translations. Their personal experiences, choices, and conflicts provide a deeper understanding of language, identity, cultural resistance, and the impacts of colonialism. Secondly, pathos represents emotional appeals. The personal stories and emotions of the characters powerfully appeal to the emotions of the audience. Universal themes such as the loss of language, changes in cultural identity, love and loss can also evoke deep emotional responses. The setting of Valley Bag, a fictional village in translations, also serves as an emotional appeal. While being a fictional place, Valley Bag reflects the typical life of Irish rural areas, evoking familiarity and empathy in the audience or readers. The social and cultural aspects of the village facilitate an emotional immersion in the story. Thus, the setting of Valley Back Village focuses more on emotional elements than other rhetorical elements. This emotional appeal is also exemplified in the scene 
where mayor repeats the word earth and shows your land a handful of soil. In this scene, mayor's action is more than just pointing to the dirt. It symbolizes her deep connection with her identity, land, and culture. The inability of Yoland to understand mayor's pronunciation of the English word is due to the Irish not pronouncing th the sounds. The exchange between these two characters, unable to understand each other's language, represents emotional depth and complexity. This scene illustrates the attempt of two people from different cultures and languages to emotionally connect, evoking a strong sense of pathos. Lastly, logos signifies a logical argument. The play logically explores the complex relationship between language and cultural identity. The impact of the change in the use of Irish and English on individuals and the community can be an important element of logical persuasion. Additionally, the process of translating Irish place names into English logically demonstrates the changes and conflicts in cultural identity. Ordnance Survey The renaming of Irish place names to English versions is a significant thematic element that highlights the cultural and linguistic changes occurring in 19th century Ireland under British influence. Some examples of these name changes in the play are like this. These changes reflect the broader theme of cultural erosion and imposition of one culture over another, central to the place exploration of identity, language, and power dynamics. The process of several Irish place names being changed to English by British soldiers is portrayed through the dialogue of the characters. This play process also shows instances where the geographical or cultural characteristics of Ireland are translated into English, resulting in the transformation or loss of the original meaning and context. The effect of logos can be maximized by quoting famous figures. The inclusion of references to notable historical figures such as Daniel O'Connell, Samuel Tyler, Courage, and William Wandsworth enhances the play's logical appeal. By invoking the names and views of these respective individuals, the narrative gains additional credibility and depth. The following is a part where the name of Daniel O'Connell was quoted. In translations, the use of Greek and Latin can indeed be considered an element of logos. In the context of the play, the use of these classical languages represents education, knowledge, and historical context of language and cultural identity. The character school a uh, schoolmaster well versed in Greek and Latin often uses these languages in his dialogue. This usage reflects his educational background and symbolizes the era's emphasis on classical learning. It also contrasts with the Irish language spoken by many other characters, highlighting the play's central themes of language, communication, and cultural change. The use of Latin is evident in Owen's dialogue as well. For instance, when he refers to Yoland as a committed hibernophile, he uses the Latin term hibernia, which is the classical name for island, combined with the suffix file, indicating a lover or enthusiast. This terminology captures a profound appreciation and interest in island. The term hibernophile extends beyond a mere fondness for Ireland. It suggests a deep-seated understanding and respect for Irish identity, culture, and heritage. 
In this sense, translations includes the element of etus, patus, and logos to create a multi-layered exploration of language power and invisibility. The place in tricked portrayal of these elements provides a comprehensive understanding of the complex historical relationship between Ireland and Britain, making it a significant work both for both literary and rhetoric studies.